Hello, it's Drea Bauer again, Vice President of Women's Empowerment with Jinga Baby. We have with us Mal Duane today. We are so excited. It, she is a best-selling author, a life recovery coach, a highly successful real estate business owner. Um, she's been through a lot in her life, and she's got a lot of great information to share. She's a spiritual war warrior for the sisterhood, which is right in line with what we do here at Jinga Baby. She is helps women heal their broken hearts and reclaim their lives. She's overcome devastating circumstances in her own life dealing with addiction, depression, and loss. And she's used the faint, painful experiences to transform her own life and become awakened, authentic, and an abundant woman. She's an expert in women's life recovery and spiritual transformation. She believes women are infinitely more powerful than they believe or have been taught. Her mission is to help them in discovering and connecting with the divine feminine power within themselves. Mal's book... Chick, uh, Alpha Chick, Five Steps for Moving from Pain to Power, is an Amazon bestseller and the recipient of numerous awards that she can tell us about. She's been featured on Fox News, CBS Radio, and over 150 radio shows all over the U.S. MariaShriver.com is included in those. That's really great, given that I'm in California. I love to hear that. Healthy Living Magazine and Aspire Magazine. She's built a school in Africa in memory of her niece, Holly, and lives in Framingham, Massachusetts, correct? Yes. <laughs> With your husband and your English, Jack Russell. So we're so pleased to have you here today. I can't wait to share some great information. Um, you have a lot of experience. I know that is, has led to you to your path. So can you tell us a little bit more and get us started? I'm happy to be here with you, Drea. Thank you so much. Well, my life is absolutely perfect today, but once upon a time, it was a train wreck. I spent 25 years as an alcoholic, battling depression, self-loathing, and it took me into some very dark places. It started when I was 16 years old. I didn't feel that I was good enough. I was different than the other kids. I was six feet tall. I weighed about 100 pounds. Instead of calling me Mal, they called me malnutrition, malfunction, the Celtic. So at a very delicate age, already the seeds of inferiority were being planted. Well, what I discovered one day was a few drinks made me feel a whole lot wow. better. And they gave me false courage. They numbed the pain, and so I was off and running. I said, this is terrific. And I embraced using alcohol and abusing alcohol for a very, very long time until it got to a point where I felt I was living in a black hole. I had no hope, no desires for anything, no inspiration. I just wanted to stay in bed with the covers over my head. And I was contemplating, how can I leave? How can I end all of this? Because I didn't have one more day in me to drink and deal with the chaos that was, you know, a constant picture in my life. And that's what inspired me to share my story was that I had a massive transformation. Wow. Uh, December of 1988, I heard a different voice in my head for the very first time. And that voice has been guiding me ever since and helped me create the life I have today. Wow, I'm sure a lot of young ladies can relate because we all go through those things. Even the people who are the so-called popular kids, we all have those trials and tribulations as children. There's always something that we feel like we don't fit in with. or So I know a lot of people can relate and some people turn to alcohol, some people turn to you know eating disorders. There are so many vices that people go to. How did you... How did you find that, that connection that led you to be able to get out of that dark place? Well, very interestingly, I had no will left in me, and that was probably the gift. Because when I didn't have any will left, then God's will was able mm -hmm. to step in. And I literally broke open that night. My heart broke open. Um, and it's often referenced as a night of the dark soul in literature, things like that. I actually experienced that. My heart broke open, and as I said, I heard this different voice that told me I could not leave, that I had many lessons to learn. And once I mastered those lessons, I would need to go and teach others. 
And I was like, are you kidding me? You know, my life is a wreck. I have nothing. And this voice said, oh, no, dear child, you have much to live for, but you have much work to do. Mm. And once you have done that, you will have an amazing life ahead of you. All of a sudden, and I, to this day, could not explain the feeling in enough words, but I was at peace. The first time I felt complete peace in many, many, many years, I just, all the resistance, all the struggle, all the fear, everything was just gone. And I was like, in my bed, I almost felt like I was floating. I was at such peace, and I felt a sense of love that came over me that I knew right then and there that I was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So out of a sense of... I never touched alcohol again. So basically out of a sense of desperation, you surrendered. Absolutely. And so is uh, your book, Alpha Chick, does it chronicle your experiences? Does it give us insightful information on how we can overcome things? Or tell us a little more about, about your book. It's a toolbox. Alpha Chick is a toolbox to take you from pain to power. So what happened was I do share my journey of this alcoholism and the craziness and the pain and the failed relationships and a failed marriage. You name it, I had it. But once I started practicing the five steps that, in fact, were channeled to me, I always thought there were seven, Mm. but then I was corrected and told, oh, no, child, only five, and they will spell faith. And I was like, but why faith? They said, because it's a word everybody understands. It's a word that each person has a, a, each individual has a personal meaning for. And it's not about religion. It's about belief in yourself. And I practiced those five steps. And I still practice those five steps. And everyone that I've taught to practice those five steps have changed their lives Dramatic. What are those five steps for our, our viewers? The first one is focus. We are always running around and we are looking for the solution to our problems outside of ourselves. Mm-hmm. But in fact, everything we need to know, Drea, is already within us. Mm-hmm. All the answers are here. If we just quiet the mind down, just slow everything down a bit, stop doing and, and start being, we will, or you or anybody else, will tap into that divine voice that's within you, that divine guidance that's within you. We are all born with this power and this divine guidance. The word alpha actually means from the beginning in Greek. A lot of people think, oh, alpha, like, you know, oh, yeah. rough and tough. No, it's from the beginning. Where women from the beginning are born with this incredible power. And all you need to do is just slow everything down, get quiet, and allow it to emerge, to speak to you, to guide you. So that's step one. Step two is A for acceptance. We go through life resisting, denying, pushing, not letting go of the past. And we carry that around like an old suitcase. And we constantly define ourselves by what's happened in the past. But you know what? The past doesn't exist anymore. The only time the past exists is when you think about it. Other than that, it's gone. So if we could just let all of that go, because it has no meaning, no bearing on who you are today, many of us, have had trauma and pain and suffering in the past. When I say let it go, it doesn't mean that we condone any of that behavior or upset. What it means is that you are breaking the bonds. You are releasing yourself from the attachment Mm -hmm. to your suffering. So acceptance is really about freeing yourself and forgiving. Let it go. The third step is intention. And why it's so powerful is that goals are like a written wish on paper. Yeah, you might do them, maybe you will, maybe you won't. 
but an intention as the power of your soul behind it. It keeps your feet to the fire. It keeps you moving forward. It keeps you taking action steps. You implement. That's what intention does. It creates the implementation to make changes in your life. It's very, very powerful. So when you identify all the craziness, all the stuff you need to clean up and get rid of, the overeating, the drinking, uh, drugs, whether it's sex, shopping, any bad habits, when you set, identify those things and then set the intention to change them, the success rate is astronomical. The fourth step is T for thoughts. There's been so much written about the power of thinking. But I don't think we truly understand the energy of our thoughts and how they create our reality. What we think about shows up in our life. It's a scientific fact. So if we're thinking negative and painful thoughts, that's what shows up in our experience. Mm -hmm. If we think loving, empowering thoughts, self-loving thoughts, Kindness, understanding, compassion, guess what shows up in our life? Love, peace, joy, gratitude. So we have to pay attention to our thoughts. And I used to do a very funny little quirky thing. When I found myself really stuck into my negative thinking, which is that screaming little voice in our head, we have two voices up there. One that works for us and one that works against us. And they're very easy to determine which one you're listening to. And when that nasty little one, which gives you that awful gut feeling, is just chirping away, I would take an elastic and pull it on my wrist and let it go. And that would hurt. It would burn. And I'd say, whoop, breaking my train of thought. Very simple exercise, but very powerful. And it works. And the fifth step. H is for healing and helping. When we get centered, balanced, empowered, we are living our lives authentically. We are loving who we are and accepting ourselves just the way we are. It shows. It shows the minute we walk into a room. It shows no matter what we're doing or where we're going. You, you can always tell when a woman's got her act together or her together it's it's very obvious and and that's when we need to go and help others that's when we need to share our wisdom what we've learned how we did it and go help our sisters i believe women when they collaborate are the most powerful force on the planet i totally yeah. agree you and know the dalai lama said that the western world will eventually be you know completely run by women well look what's happening in business and when we collaborate, not compete, we become a force to be reckoned with. And that's really my mission, is to empower women, to help them find that love, to live as the best versions of themselves. Step up, play a big game. That's what you're here for. You're not here to play small. Nobody was put on this planet to play small. The bigger Okay. I agree. Playing small does not serve the world for men or women. And I love you empowering women. And this is an empowering acronym. I love the whole acceptance thing because I feel like so many people live in guilt or shame of the past. And it's great to learn the lessons, but that's all they are, lessons to help move us forward in life. So, you know, really being in that present moment. That, And I love finally when you, when you get it together, when you figure out a lot of the systems, what you're doing, you know, teaching it, healing others and spreading that, that wisdom is so valuable. Again, you know, the older we get, the wiser we get. And these life experiences can be of such service to people, you know, who are younger, who maybe haven't had those things happen. So I love that you're sharing and I love that we're learning from you. And I love the faith acronym because those, it's such a strong, powerful, meaningful word anyway. And when you attach each one of those little segments of life that is so important to, to really healing you and then healing the world. So beautiful, beautiful. Um, so as an alpha chick, I can use this faith principle. How do, how do I incorporate it into everyday life? Do I go through them one at a time? Can I use them all every day? How, how do I use it in my everyday life? Well, you start with step one, focus. They build on one another. It's very funny. You, you can't 
you can't do them out of sequence. They won't be as effective. So do them, F-A-I-T-H. And that's how you get the maximum impact. So the first thing is you're really working on your mind. You're choosing the power of what is going to be running through your mind and giving you guidance and directing your life. And that's the shift of the focus. And then you start to choose how you're going to feel about yourself. And that's the acceptance. And then you choose your intentions and implementation. And that's the driving force of the career and change. So they really work in a beautiful flow. I do these every day. I start my day with a meditation practice. And if there was only one thing that I could teach women today that I will absolutely promise you will change your life dramatically for the better is a meditation practice. Because that's where you discover your power, your voice. So if you only could do that one thing, even for 10 minutes, 5 minutes, whatever, just get started on a daily ritual, I promise you your life will change so much for the better that you'll just be in awe that this simple little practice could create so much great. And then I, after my meditation, I do some journaling, some reading, some prayer. I do my exercises every day. I'm 67 years old. Wow. You look amazing. Yes. Wow. Yes. And I'm in very good physical condition. I can tell. <laughs> and I'll tell you something. I just shot a video this morning about what I do for my face. I don't use any expensive products. I share it everything. I use like all over-the-counter drugstore kind of brands. And I have really healthy skin. I eat right. I drink a ton of water. I don't smoke. I obviously don't drink because I'm in recovery. And I exercise. This is my temple for my soul. And I take good care of it. Dre. Beautiful. I love it. Yeah, this is a temple. It shows. <laughs> it shows. And you have to worship this. You have to take care of it. You know, it's the vessel that takes you through life. And if you beat the crap out of it, it's going to break down on the side of the road and the voyage is going to be over. And I think you're so right about the meditation. You know, every religious doctrine has a form of meditation in it. And they say that, you know, prayer is asking God and then meditation is waiting for the answer. So I think you're so right. And it's gotten so hard to quiet our mind in this busy world in which we live. And people have gotten to where they have insomnia and they really have a hard time shutting off their mind. But if you start to learn to control your mind and instead of letting your mind control you, I think it is so incredibly powerful in every area of your life. And I know people don't want to make time, but like you said, just whatever you have, five minutes a day, 10, 15 is great, but make a, at least a little small niche of time. We can all find five minutes. I'm a techno queen. I love technology. I'm a little bit of a geek, I have to admit. <laughs> but technology is also making slaves out of us. Mm. I mean, people are getting up and the first thing they're doing in the morning is running to that inbox. You do that. That's where you start your day from. Craziness, you know, emails from work and they may not be good and then your mind is running and then you're racing to something else. Why not start your day from a place of peace and then see how the rest of the day flows and how your work goes and the quality of your work and the quality of your communications while you're at work, dramatically different. You know, we're so used to multitasking, but the, the research has found you're better if you focus on one task and don't multitask, but everybody right. thinks I've got to be doing 5,000 things at once. But again, the research has actually found you're much better if you focus on one task and get it done. And I find men are very good at single focus. And as women, you know, we're generally, we've got kids here and, you know, food cooking here and uh, business going on here. So we do tend to multitask. But sometimes if you can just take that time out and focus, I think it's incredibly valuable. Multitasking is a myth. We, we're, we're not wired to do it. You know, it's like trying to think two thoughts at the same time. Mm -hmm. You can't. Your brain isn't wired to do it. So something's being sacrificed when you're multitasking. And I'll share an example. The, uh, a few weeks ago, I was um, down in Connecticut doing a, a program with Fabienne Fredrickson. And I, my head was into, oh, I want to look good when I get there and show up. Everybody in the room is younger than me. 
And so I was putting makeup on, and I grabbed a can to put some spray on my hair, and I sprayed my whole head with Kabloom bathroom cleaner. Oh, my I, I goodness. I multitasking. And I shared that oh. on my blog. And you wouldn't believe how many people responded. Uh, people talked about leaving a, the stove going with a kettle and then walking away and going and looking at Facebook or something and almost burnt the house down, uh, driving and not paying attention and getting into little fender benders. That's multitasking. And guess what? It doesn't work. You're putting yourself or somebody else at risk when you try to multitask, especially if you've got you know young people around you, children. So we're just not created that way to do that. So, and if just focus on one thing, life is so, so much the, easier. The first of our, our faith, focus. So I want to be an alpha chick. I know everyone now wants to be an alpha chick. Does it you work? Look like an alpha chick. Does it, <laughs> does it work for everyone? Do I have to already, you know, have done some work on myself? Do I have to have a certain job or do I have to be a mom? And it, does alpha chick work for everyone? Can any woman do it? Anybody can do it. And you don't have to have the right job. I don't believe in having the right anything to be happy because I know that I am the source of my happiness. It comes from within. And if I'm not happy here, no matter what car I drive, what dress I wear, what trip I take, what home I own, that doesn't make me happy. So anybody that's listening to this, just work the steps the way that they're laid out be patient with yourself. To create change in your life takes a little bit of discipline and effort. This is not an instant fix. It's not a Band-Aid for a cut. You have to work from it. You have to be disciplined. Show up. Do the meditation. Do some journaling. The meditation is going to bring up a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions. You may find yourself crying at times when you're just sitting quietly. That's wonderful. That is a cleansing. That means you're getting rid of the shame, the guilt, uh, the negative thinking that may be buried very deep within you. Allow it. Allow it to come up. That's okay. You might even want to write about that afterwards. Things may come up where you say, gee, I wonder what that really meant when I was thinking about that. Just journal. Let your hand kind of free flow. Just go with it. Don't control the thought process. Just allow yourself to be led. So let's go through them again. So F is focus. Focus. A is acceptance, acceptance. In intuition, intention, thought, thought and te helping, helping and others, helping others. Wonderful. What a great acronym. I love it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on and planning that in my mind and using those in my daily practice along with my meditation that I'm going to make time for every day. So um, tell us where we can find out more about you and where we can get in touch with you and all that good information. Thank you for asking. Well, you can go to my website, Maldwayne coach.com and there's all kinds of resources and prior interviews and PDFs and everything else. It's also a free gift on the site if it speaks to you. You can also reach out to me personally if you'd like to have this conversation at a much deeper personal level. I'm on Facebook at uh, Facebook Maldwain Coach. I also have a group called Awakened Authentic Abundant Women, and I have a group for women in recovery called Sisters of Sobriety. Uh, so reach out. I'm here, and I will respond to any one of your listeners personally. I always do. There's no form letter or anything. You'll get me. I'm very hands-on about helping the women that want to talk to I you. love it and you're very, very powerful so tell us what your next project is because I know you've got so much going on but I'd love yeah. to hear what's next in store I'm working on an online course which will be a six-week online program at a very reasonable retail it's going to take women through a very empowering process because I talk about the life recovery formula as well and how if we look at our lives and with three pillars and using those five steps, we can literally change anything, do anything, create anything that we want. So I'm working on that now. haven't officially named the class yet, but it, it will be coming out probably oh, early 2015. I have a second book percolating in my head. And um, just, I... I feel so blessed, Drea, to do what I do every day. I'm a real estate broker as well, but 
my work with women is my mission. It is my passion. And to just, I do a, creating a lot of social media every day, posts and images and things for women that I hope will touch their soul, touch their heart, and, and ignite the desire and the hope in them to start to make changes in their lives. Well, we are so grateful. Uh, to have you share today and it's been insightful and I look forward to hearing more from you. I can't wait to hear about the second book. Thanks again and we look forward to keeping up with you. Bless you girl. Thank Bye -bye. you.